The Koopalings, a bunch of weird henchmen that have helped Bowser in a ton and a ton of games who were even seen in a plethora of spin-off games. They were created by Yoichi Kotabe and Takashi Tezuka before the release of Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels in 1986 and were supposed to be Bowser's kids and new bosses in Super Mario Bros. 3, with their names being inspired by famous musicians which the game's North American localizers came up with, since they weren't really given a distinct name in the original Japanese version. Almost everybody knows about them since they've been seen in so, so many 2D Super Mario Bros. games. However, out of all of them, which one is the absolute best and worst? Which ones have the best designs, overall character and boss fights? Well, that's what we're going to find out today by ranking them all. Now one little side note before we start, Bowser Jr. is not included here since he would easily win and in some games he is considered to be part of the group. But now that I made it all clear, let's get into the ranking right away. First up, on the very bottom we have Larry Koopa, the lovely blue-haired freak. He's the youngest Koopaling and is often seen at the forefront of the Koopaling's antics. Now, there are multiple reasons why I don't like him that much. Overall, his design is quite boring to me. While I like the colors used in his design, because sky blue is absolutely beautiful, he's not that special. The only thing that really sets him apart is his hair. Besides that, his look doesn't play in on his strategy in battle or even overall character. They could have done more with it, I think, because out of all the Koopalings, his design is the most normal and bland. Even his character is quite non-existent. Out of all the Koopalings, he just stands out the least even though he's always at the forefront. And when it comes to his battles, he's the most simplistic and boring out of all of them. In the first two games, he doesn't do anything special at all. Sure, in later games they became more interesting, diverse and complicated even. Think of the moving platforms one seen in New Super Mario Bros. Wii. That one was certainly a lot better than any of the ones seen before. But still, it has a lot of problems, because when he starts spinning in his shell for example, he can easily be avoided. And in later battles, like the one in New Super Mario Bros. U, they try to spice it up a bit, but still, it's awfully similar to the previous one, so overall, I'm not that impressed. Now for the next one, Iggy Koopa, who's a green-haired freak that reminds me a bit of Luigi. He's a hyperactive, demented and unpredictable Koopaling that is quite wacky both in battle and in person. Now, while he's just as plain and boring in the first two titles as the previous one I mentioned, he got a lot more character and interesting moves in the new Super Mario Bros. games. First of all, his design became more interesting, resembling a Koopaling version of Luigi, being tall, slender and fast-moving. All of this fits extremely well with his movements and overall hyperactive and wacky character. And when it comes to his boss fights, he certainly has some interesting ones that actually work quite well. Especially the ones seen in New Super Mario Bros. 2 and U work well. Those jerky random movements of the chain chomp make it less predictable and it's overall an unusual mechanic not seen anywhere else. While the pipes and ceiling walking in the other game can be a fun surprise and even funny looking at times. Overall, I like him a lot. Now on to the next one, Roy Koopa, a bulky boy with stylish glasses. His head and sunglasses are pink as well as his shell originally, which is likely a reference to real men wear pink, which is a fun twist in my opinion. Overall his design is very recognizable, he certainly has one of the best looking out of all the Koopalings by far. As soon as you see his face you know who it is, and that's all because of the pink face and sunglasses. And all of this fits with his character, although he's not that expressive or interesting to be honest. In battle he also shows off a lot of interesting mechanics, like using a handheld build blaster which makes for a great platforming boss fight, pipes that can give you a bit of a surprise in battle, and the closing walls and charging, which puts some interesting pressure on the player. So overall I like the fights with him a lot. They all bring something new to the table and have a specific effect which they pull off well. Even though he can be a bit easy, but this is the case for all Koopalings. Now on to our next one, Lemmy Koopa, who is depicted as a small, fun-loving child, which works extremely well for him. His design is colorful and one of the most detailed out of all the Koopalings with the odd hair and even face paint, which fits extremely well with the childish character they are going for. This entire little kid character is even seen in every fight and interaction with him, which makes him stand out and enjoyable in my opinion. He's not that serious and I like that a lot. 
And all the circus themed fights you have with him work so extremely well, they are a highlight of new Super Mario Bros in my opinion. While the first two games didn't offer anything too special, the later games took it all a step further and created some amazing platforming themed fights. For example, the final battle with him in New Super Mario Bros Wii, where you use the balls he throws to get to the big one he's standing on. This is certainly an amazing concept for a boss battle. All of this makes me love the fights with him, since both the style and mechanics seen in them work very, very well, in my opinion. Let's move on to the next Koopaling on my list, who ends up in the top three. Wendy O. Koopa, the sole female Koopaling who's obsessed with rings and ice skating. Now, since she's the only female, you obviously see this in her design with the use of high heels, pink and jewelry. Overall, she pulls it off quite well, making her a good looking and classy woman with elegance and some sass. Her entire character is based around this, which works well overall. I like it at least. And to be honest, I even think she does it all better than Peach even. And how she uses those little things that define her style in battle makes it all even better and it also makes for some really good mechanics. The fight with her that I certainly like the most is the one seen in New Super Mario Bros U, where she's ice skating around the arena, shooting rings similar to her bracelet that can even hit icicles on the ceiling. The fact that even arena hazards can get you is really cool, and with her being so fast and agile on the ice while you're slow and a bit clumsy, makes for a good contrast to make the fight even more challenging. And stuff like this is seen in more fights, making her a fun one to take on. Now let's move on to our number two, Morton Koopa Jr. The only Koopaling to have a brown skin tone and is often depicted as the largest Koopaling. Personally, I love his rough and tough appearance, especially later on when they gave him a huge hammer, which is fitting for this giant. I love playing as him in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and it's certainly an amazing and cool looking Koopaling. And in later boss fights with him in games like New Super Mario Bros U, he shows off his badass moves with the hammer, which makes for an interesting boss fight. Because he uses it to launch pokey segments at you, which is certainly an interesting approach. But I would have liked it even better if he also used the hammer to hit Mario. And another interesting battle with him is the one where the pillars rise when he does a ground pound causing them to slam extremely hard against the ceiling, again making for an interesting fight. Overall, this Koopaling is as badass as they come. And now we move on to our very last Koopaling, the one that is certainly the best out of all of them, Ludwig von Koopa. The eldest who possesses a magnificent intelligence, most likely superior to that of all the other Koopalings, and was inspired by Beethoven himself. His entire look is based around his legendary historic character, known for for his amazing music and intelligence. Although he could also be a bit rude, believe it or not, just watch the video by History Buffs. And the funny thing is, the two look extremely alike, which automatically gives him a great design. The hair is especially good, and his character is also extremely fitting. He's a classy and quite adult person, which makes him stand out a lot, compared to all the other Koopalings. And his boss fights? Well, those are absolutely amazing! Even the earlier ones are extremely fun. For example, in Super Mario World, where he goes full Matrix mode. Another great battle you have with him is the one in New Super Mario Bros. U, where he goes full Super Saiyan by duplicating himself, flying and firing multiple magic blasts with each shot. Out of all the Koopalings, he certainly has the most impressive and mind-blowing boss fights, with all kinds of abilities and mechanics that both challenge and impress you. All of this makes him an extremely good boss, one that's memorable to almost all players who encounter him. So this means that out of all the Koopalings, he is the absolute winner in my opinion, ending up in the god tier, both being the oldest and the best out of all of them. His character is based on an interesting well-known composer with great history, and his abilities and fights are impressive time and time again. Opinions may vary of course, so that's why I want to ask you all one thing. Tell me in the comment section below what your tier list would be. And if you want to know more about Koopalings, then check the Evolution Of playlist I put in the upper right corner. But for now, I will have to go. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to click the subscribe button and the bell button and check out the playlists and videos in the upper right corner because I got some interesting ones on the Koopalings and Bowser and Bowser Jr. So go check them out.